Look at that. Isn't that cool? Hello folks, this is Rifat. Today we're making a program that uses D3JS and SVG to create some dynamic shapes. Let's get started. First thing you want to do is start by creating an SVG. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to say var SVG equals D3 dot select body. So I'm selecting the HTML body right now. Okay, so I've selected the body. Now I'm just going to append an SVG. Simple as that. Okay, append SVG. Now I'm not done. I got to give this SVG some width and some height. And of course, these two guys are variables. So we got to make them variables. So now I'm going to say here, one attribute of my SGV element is a width, which is be given by this and a height which is going to be given by the height attribute so here's the height which is h um, and here's the width which is w okay great now we got our svg rolling we need a data set now you can either manually create your data set so here you go maybe you can put some random numbers um, and actually we can do that for now and then later on we'll come back and spice it up with some random numbers. Anyway, so we got this rolling, now what do we do? Well, make sure you save your code and you don't see anything here, but if I go ahead and go to debug mode and I inspect element what's going on here, you're gonna see something pretty cool. You see this SVG element? It's been rendered, it's been created, and it's on the document, okay? So now we can put some stuff on this SVG element. So what can we put? Well, we can put some circles to represent our data. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm gonna write var, var circles equals, let me move the camera a bit over here so I can see what I'm typing. Um, let's get rid of this ad. So var circles is equal to what? Well, I'm gonna select my SVG this time and I'm gonna select all the circles in my SVG. Now, of course, there's no circles in my SVG yet, but D3JS is going to recognize this and it's going to add as many circles as needed. That's the key point. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to feed D3JS my data set. And then I'm going to enter, uh, use the enter method to tell D3JS the difference between what I have and what I want. Okay, and then finally I'm going to append, append some circles. Okay, so let's see. Now you don't see anything anything on the screen yet, but that's about to change pretty soon, pretty soon. Okay, good. So now what am I gonna do? Now I'm gonna give these circles some attributes. So I'm gonna write circle, uh, circles.atter, and I'm gonna give them three things. I'm gonna give them an X coordinate for their center, a Y coordinate for their center, and a radius. So for the X coordinate, what do I wanna give? Um, I mean, you can manually hard code the X coordinate, but you don't wanna do that, because you have a bunch of data sets, and if you want to scale up, that's not going to be that easy. So we're going to put a function right here. So what's that going to be a function of? Um, hmm. What can I make my x coordinate? Well, imagine I want to equally distribute the the x coordinates along the length of the SVG element. What can I do? Well, I can take I can take the width of the SVG element and divide it by the number of elements in my data set or I can do this I can put another argument in my function let's call that argument I and I can say for example return I times 50 okay plus 30 sure okay so now I've got my X coordinates rolling and you're gonna see maybe there's an error here let's zoom in what's my error let's see unexpected token uh, semicolon Okay, that's okay. Just dis dis disregard that for now. And now let's keep on moving. Okay, we're gonna add a Y coordinate to our circle. And mind me if my fingers pop up on the screen. So for the Y coordinate, I just want it to be half of the height of the element. So I'm just gonna put H over two. H of course is my height of the SVG, which is 200. And finally, I've got to put a width, a radius to my circles. So what's my radius gonna be? Well, it's just gonna be the whatever my data is. So I'm gonna say return D. So put a semicolon there, and we should be good to go. Wow, look at that, isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. Check it out, we got five circles because there's five elements in our D3JS data set. Uh, what else we got? Well, we can put some cool stuff here now. 
um, we can say for example we can give these we can give these circles some colors so for example red if that's your favorite color you can make them red is it gonna be red no why isn't it red um, maybe I have to put color here oh it's circles not circle that's why okay now they should be red right yes okay that's awesome uh, what else can we do we can add some stroke stroke is uh, the outline for the circle so at her stroke let's make it you know what I don't want it to be red can I make it uh, green okay and I'm gonna make this light green I think that's gonna be pretty nice hopefully uh, it's okay it's not that nice uh, I want to make the stroke a bit bigger so I'm going to add a stroke width and let's make that uh, 5 pixels. Now all of these guys over here, let me put a semicolon here and not here. So all of these guys, all of these circles have the same stroke width but if you want to change that you can make the size of the stroke width which is the outline a function of the data so or the datum. So you're going to see each of them now have uh, the bigger the data the bigger the stroke width. I think that looks kind of ugly. So I'm gonna change it back to what it was I'm gonna make this one blue actually and this one light blue. Maybe that will be nicer Hmm. Well, it's not bad. It's not bad uh, now. What can we do? Well now we can do a couple of things Remember I said I'll come back here to the data set We can actually change up our data set a bit and we can make it like this var data set equals empty and instead we can put some random numbers in there so for example we can say um, hmm, we can say var number is equal to uh, what can I do math dot random okay and multiply that by 30 and I'm gonna push whatever number I get to my data set so data set dot push uh, number okay, I have no idea if this is gonna work if it does, that would be great. Okay, so we got one circle only. So maybe I should make it bigger. And it's updating. And we still have only one circle. And the reason is because we're creating only one number. So how do we change that? Well, we have to add a for loop to create as many numbers as we want. As many data, datum as we want. So for i var i is equal to zero, i less than how many data set how many data elements do I want let's say 20 and I plus plus okay and let me put all of this code inside here and let's see what what's gonna happen what's gonna happen Wow that's a lot of data that's a lot of data and a lot of circles actually and you can actually um, change this you can see it's being cut off right here that's because the width of my SVG is too small so let's say my width is uh, 700. So now it should be good. Hopefully you'll see all the data and look at that. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? Um, all right, folks, and that's it for this episode of making dynamic shapes with SVG. Thanks for watching this episode of Coding with Refund. We'll check you out in the next one.